it's a complex arrangement and of course the procedures vary from airline to airline but but in basic terms well you see the, like a formula one race car right you know it comes in for a pit stop they pump in some fuel maybe change change some tires and then the driver goes back out on the track well essentially that's a that's an aircraft turnaround it's something that is very very necessary and it has been refined over over a lot of years where an aircraft will come in from from flying between two cities and then depart as quickly as possible in uh, to another city it has to depart as quickly as possible because airlines uh, they make their money when the aircraft are flying they don't they don't make any money when the aircraft is sitting on the ground uh, so the turnaround has to be really efficient it can be hard on an aircraft actually you know you, when you think in in uh, domestic flying or short haul international flying you know a turnaround might be 30 or 40 minutes this is really hard on a on an aircraft engine it's probably the worst thing that you can do to a gas turbine engine is is shut it down let it cool for 30 minutes and then start it up again <clears throat> um, but that's that's the nature of the business that's what that's what we have to do so when an aircraft lands from flying from one city to another there's a you know complex communication system within within airlines so people on the ground know pretty accurately when the aircraft is going to arrive and they also know pretty well how much fuel the aircraft will need on its next leg and how many passengers are on the on the next flight and how much cargo is on the next flight so so calculations for for the for the next flight um, once the turnaround is complete is uh, you know well underway you know, hours sometimes days before before the flight even air, the aircraft even arrives uh, for the turnaround. So, so these sorts of calculations are going on all the time. But what happens when an aircraft lands on the runway and then taxis to a terminal? When you're sitting up in the in the terminal, you know, looking out the window, you don't often get an appreciation what happens. The engineers know that if the, an aircraft's taxiing in, they know if there's some anything wrong with the aircraft that they have to go and meet the aircraft and and fix it. Um, and and of course that that judgment of what needs to be fixed immediately or what defects can be deferred until the aircraft stops flying for the day and things like that that those sorts of things are happening all the time you know pilots might complain about a dirty windscreen judgments have to be made about uh, you know whether how important these uh, these sort of defects are you might think a dirty windscreen is hardly important at all but when you think the next flight might be landing into the setting sun having a dirty windscreen is a really bad thing to happen because the pilots can hardly see out the see out the windscreen so those sorts of judgments are being being made all the time in turnarounds you know what what can we do what can we fix now um, what will be the consequences of the delay if uh, if we if we need to fix some, something but the the aircraft is delayed from it for its um, departure because people people aren't happy people are never happy if their if their flight is delayed the other things that happen in the turnaround of course are people come off people disembark from the aircraft so there has to be a means for them to to uh, to walk into the terminal that might be across the tarmac or it might be might be through uh, through an aero bridge or down some down some stairs people come off their baggage and cargo has to come off so that takes time it takes coordination and there's vehicles like i said you know it's overwhelming sometimes uh, the complexity of the of the ramp operation and vehicles driving all over the place the first time you're involved in that in that uh, situation you you can hardly hardly make sense of it all and and you think oh it's going to be impossible for me to know what what all these vehicles are doing but eventually you do you do understand uh, what what everyone's doing people come off baggage comes off cargo comes off uh, then usually uh, depending on the on the airline the the, the cabin is cleaned and might be very quick clean just going through with some uh, vacuum cleaners and cleaning cleaning up crumbs and and wrappers and things and making the seats look neat again there's servicing in terms of uh, lavatories and and drinking water so you'll often see uh, vehicles pull up to the aircraft and they're 
The purpose of those vehicles is to dump the lavatory tanks and replenish the rinse water in the lavatory system, top up the drinking water in the aircraft, and then people come back on again. So the the departing the departing uh, flight people have to be boarded and and you know you're familiar with the sequence of boarding that lots of airlines use. You know, board from from the back. People go to the back first, and and then uh, then gradually they're in the rows uh, closer to the nose of the aircraft. You know, come on, come on later. Or business class people get on first, and and other people get on later. You know, whatever the procedure might be. Also going on at that time is refueling. The pilots who are flying the next leg might be the same pilots who who arrived on that, that particular aircraft. Uh, they they give notice of uh, how much fuel they they would require for the next leg. A refueling truck comes and and hooks up to the aircraft and starts pumping pumping fuel into the aircraft. Now this takes coordination as well because because uh, it's a dangerous operation when the aircraft being refueled. So the cabin crew need to know when the refueling is uh, is going on, and if there's passengers on board, then then they need to. Uh, be aware also of the refueling operation, and need to know uh, if a fire breaks out. Then you know which side of the aircraft they they will uh, need to evacuate on. Very rarely anything happens with uh, refueling uh, these days. It's such a safe uh, safe procedure. But all this servicing is going on in a, in a coordinated way. And like I say, the you know the best turnarounds are like like 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So you know, there's a lot going on in that that short time frame. Pre-flight inspections. So uh, if uh, if the airline has uh, engineering staff in in that particular airport, then the engineers will probably do a pre-flight inspection. But it's also necessary for the pilots to to do a pre-flight inspection um, because they're they're the ultimate authority when it comes to accepting the aircraft for flight. It's uh, usual that pilots will do a pre-flight inspection as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, f four eyes are better than two eyes. So, uh, you know, if one person does a pre-flight inspection, then then it's, um, you know, they they don't have to be insulted that somebody else is coming and doing the same inspection because um, because we, we all know that uh, sometimes people... Uh, pick up different things, you know, as they as they walk around uh, an aircraft. Um, once the refueling is carried out, then there's some um, some little tests that we have to make to the to the fuel to make sure the fuel is not contaminated at all. So we do a little drain from the fuel tanks to make sure there's not too much water in the fuel tanks or any other contamination. And then it's a matter of waiting till the the loading is complete. People and baggage and cargo and hooking up a tow bar and a and a tug to the to the aircraft in preparation for pushback so of course all the doors have to be closed and uh, they're usually inspected um, inside the aircraft the cabin crew close the doors and they they do a they do a cross check so exactly the same philosophy you know four eyes are better than two eyes so one person uh, closes the door and uh, they they do a cross check of each other's uh, doors. Then yeah, once all the doors are closed, cargo doors are closed, the aircraft's ready to to push back. Um, quite often, there's communication between uh, between the ground and the cockpit. So you might see some people walking around with a with a headset uh, connected by a cord to the to the uh, to the aircraft. So it's just a means of communication between the ground and the cockpit. So um, the people on the ground can give clearance that the it's clear to start the engines because pilots can't see can't see backwards uh, very well. So the uh, if there's any activity behind the aircraft, then uh, the person on the ground is has the best best eyes to see if it's uh, clear to start the engines. Uh, the pilots have to get uh, pushback approval from the from the control tower and clearance to start the engines and and then um, the communication with the ground gives clearance for that. People on the ground also monitor the engines as they're starting up, you know, in case there's a fire as the engines start, um, they can communicate to the uh, to the cockpit. If the pilots uh, haven't seen the increase in engine temperature on their, their instruments, then the person on the ground can, 
can really let them know quickly that there's uh, something wrong with the engine start. But once the engines are started and the aircraft's pushed back, then it's a then it's a matter of disconnecting the, the tow bar. And the last thing that happens is the uh, is uh, yeah the person in communication with the cockpit uh, disconnects their their headset and uh, you know international symbol for everything's uh, everything's okay. There's a there's a thumbs up and a and a wave goodbye and uh, and the flight departs. So so yeah, a lot of activity in those thirty or forty minutes. Of course, you know longer international flights, the turnarounds might be might be longer, might be uh, sixty or ninety minutes long. But but um, but yeah, for mid-size aircraft uh, flying short haul, then uh, then the optimum turnaround is uh, is uh, like 30, 30 or forty minutes. Yeah, so a lot of activity goes on in that turnaround time.